welcome everyone good morning good afternoon good evening as per your respective time zone we were just waiting for everyone so welcome everyone so on this side and today we will be talking about incident handling and data forensics in our security operation centers fundamentals so today's agenda is over here in event versus incident incident handling processes uh process the flow we'll talk about that what is digital forensics and uh, six years of forensics and determining an unusual activity like kind of a practical over there in terms of this see before we jump and talk about in terms of incident handling the very first thing is that you should know that what is the difference between an event and an incident every event is an incident or every incident is an event great so every incident is an event guys okay so when we are talking about an event it's just the occurrence of something and you, you know some activity as you guys have mentioned okay so just an occurrence of something whereas when we talk about incident when that event which has occurred has an adverse effect that will be considered as your incident right so an event is any observable occurrence in the it infrastructure it encompasses a wide range of activities and can be both routine and non routine so they are not necessarily problems or issues they are simply occurrences that can be monitored for various purposes such as security performance analysis or auditing examples are like typing on a keyboard receiving an email updating a firewall server reboot whereas when we talk about incident incident is a specific type of event that has a negative impact on its it systems and consequently on the business so it represents an unplanned interruption or reduction in the quality of an it service examples are like ddos attacks server room flooding malware infections or hardware failures right so i will give you a very simple example as per the definition which you are talking about right that every incident is an event but every event is not an incident right so for example uh, if i say there was a login attempt we got a log we got to know that okay there was a login attempt so login attempt would be what will it be an event or will it be an incident so for example we got a login attempt for siam's account so will it be event or incident event right now on the same thing if i say that we found out that multiple login attempts were there for siam's account then multiple failure login attempts you can say that is an incident that someone might be trying to crack the password isn't it right so that's why every incident is an event but every event cannot be an incident it's we have to make a sense out of it you can say so in these scenarios what also we have is guys we have conditions actually that whether it is a false positive like we you know when we get an alert so it is also like looked out for whether it is a false positive false negative true positive true negative for those who don't know about this let me give an idea see four things are there guys four things are there true positive is there true negative is there false positive is there and false negative is there okay so what i'm going to do i will give you some situations this is regarding attack this is an alert so basically attack and alert will be on the basis of the events and incident only right so now see when you get an alert that okay you know it's saying that it, that alert alert as in they're notifying us that something malicious is going on you know then we have to look into that whether it is really an incident or not okay so i'll tell you that see when there is an attack and for that attack 
if you are getting an alert that will be when there is an attack going on and you are getting an alert for that so alert is saying that okay there is an attack going on so alert gave us positive and in reality also there was an attack that means it is your true positive correct that the notification which we got is a true one that okay that it's it's really an incident going on alert said there is an attack going on alert told us positive that there is an attack going on but in reality there was no attack that makes it false positive this would be something like this uh, remember when we were talking about the correlation rule and i was saying that okay for one user account multiple login failure attempts were there which was more than three and within three minutes of a time frame remember that rule which we have discussed so many times that for one user account one user account multiple login failures were there when i say multiple login failures that means let's suppose it was more than three and that too within three minutes of a time frame correct so as per the rule as per the condition it should give us an uh, alert agree now think about it let's suppose that account was of anusha we are considering a name Anusha is an employee of an organization. So that account for which we were getting multiple login failure attempts within three minutes of a time frame, that account was of Manusha. Uh, sorry, Anusha. Now, now, when we get as per the rule, it is considering it as an incident. Agree? Because we got an alert, and as per that alert, we are getting to know that okay, it is an incident over there. But when we cross checked it, when we checked the reality, because obviously we have to check whether it is Anusha or not. So when we cross checked it, we got to know it was Anusha only who was trying to access her account. Now, let, let's suppose, you know, maybe Anusha forgot her password. That's why she made multiple attempts. So now what happened? It was the employee itself who was trying to access his or her own account that makes this not an incident now correct but because it was anusha only who was trying to access her account not the attacker so it is not an incident anymore does that make sense so that makes this as your false positive i hope it's more clear now that makes it false positive because we got an alert that okay there is an incident going on but in reality it was not the alert correct now when alert said negative that no attack is going on but in reality but in reality the attack is going on that makes this alert this negative true or false false right i hope this makes sense now alert said negative that no attack is going on and in reality also there was no attack going on that means the information which was given by the alert is true so this become true negative clear so when we have a situation like this these two are kind of a normal situation see like in case if there is an attack going on so you should be notified for that attack correct you should get an alert for that uh, uh, alert so sorry for that attack my bad right so that is a good set that's a good scenario so that you can quickly perform your response against those incident and true negative is kind of a very chill situation a relaxed environment you can say because negative means that there is no attack going on and false negative means yes yes in reality also there is no attack going on that's like that's a relief like you know alert uh, our <clears throat> alert is also not bugging us and in reality also there is no attack going on kind of a chill life chill life 
False positive is like wrong alerts. It can be considered like a frustrating scenario at times when there are a lot of false positive. Sometimes it is fine, but if you are getting multiple, 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 multiple of uh, false positive, so that's kind of a you know frustrating situation. And this ne uh, false negative. <laughs> this would be a nightmare to the security team. Because in false negative, what it is happening is that attack is going on in the background, but we are not getting any alert for that, which gives attackers a bit more, you know, free space to perform their attack because they are not being monitored and they can do whatever they want to do after that. Make sense? So false positive, as I mentioned, Nishant, uh, zero day attack, any zero day attack, that will be a false negative. Because our system security system do not know about that attack beforehand. That is something new. A new vulnerability has been identified. The system will be telling us that okay, no attack is there. But in reality, a attack was going on in the backside. So that is what you were talking about in terms of the difference between the event and incident. And scenarios like false positive, false negative, true positive, true negative, and related to that. Okay. Now Okay, these things are also logged, right? These things are logged. These things can be uh, literally seen on your SIM solutions, which you have already seen. How uh, those things looks like in your SIM solutions. Now it brings us to the next concept regarding incident handling process and flow. Okay. So can we define this incident handling or incident response as your like a kind of a systematic approach? I would say which is considered or which is taken in order to handle your security incidents with minimal damage and better recovery time and cost, cost benefit also, right? Minimal damage, good recovery time and also have some cost benefit. So, Basically, when you talk about incident response, no guys, incident response, it can have both. It can have your technical actions as well as it can have your non-technical actions. So when I'm talking about the technical actions, technical actions, which we'll see, uh, which are written over here also, technical actions will be including containment, you know, eradicating, recovering from the incidents, right? All of these things and some recommendations, recommendations in system changes in order to provide or protect our systems for the or network from the future incidents. Whereas when we talk about non-technical non-technical uh, actions in terms of incident response, non-technical actions would be like creating a communication plan, okay, or including like communication with the operating uh, incident to employ. Okay, that is what non-technical. Communicating the incident to employees, to stakeholders, Responding to media, dealing with legal issues, or a, you know actions which are taken regarding policy uh, violation as well. So I was saying like if there is any incident uh, happening because of any insider threat, correct? Okay, right? So when you found out, obviously what you will do? Will you be terminating his contract after that? Will you be firing him from the company? Right? If there is any disgruntled employee, we call them as a insider threat. When they are part of any attack or incident within the organization, obviously we will be firing them. So while firing them, will you be including your HR in that process? So can we also say now for incident response, your HR will also be required? Part of the team. Any incident happened, will you be facing some legal issues? Because violations will be there. Will we be including our legal representatives in that scenario? Because they have a knowledge of the legal side of it. Yes, right? So that's why I have mentioned like, you know, we have technical action teams and we have non-technical as well. So incident response carries out both. 
technical and non technical technical would be as i mentioned team from the hardcore team okay, those who will be containing eradicating and you know uh, recovering from the incidents non technical would be like including uh, include communicating with uh, the incident to employees responding to media dealing with the legal issues uh, all of these things and all of these things are happening over here in this particular phase uh varsha first we close it close as in first you will be removing each and everything okay first you will make sure your system are recovered okay they have their data back into them and they are you know back to the business process after that you can disclose it so what happens over here as you can see in this image also in post incident activity we have done incident documentation incident impact assessment incident review and policies and then close incidents like to disclose to others whether or not we want to do that clear so this over here i have given you an image like i have pasted an image over here i hope everyone can see that this is actually a good elaborated process flow of an incident handling this is a great process flow of your incident handling so what is happening over here anyone okay see anyway um i was just asking about this process flow if anyone has any idea about these process flow of incident response so this is incident handling process and flow we have seen multiple uh, you can say processes in terms of incident handling but they all fall or they all boil down into some in the same picture only this is a quick overview and detailed overview i would say okay so nist you might have seen for nist also in terms of incident response process you might have seen preparation detection analysis containment eradication recovery and uh, post incident activity so i was just giving an idea about this one see for nist if you talk about nist in terms of their incident response life cycle i was saying what it does it go for the preparation detection analysis containment eradication recovery and post incident activity to give you a brief idea about this one what it does it does the preparation first preparation means preparing ourselves first in order to thwart or not let the attack to happen on the very first phase or in the very first place okay we are not letting the attack to happen on the very first place apart from that we see do we have a policy defined for this incident response or not okay do we have preparations for it or not any strategies are defined or not if not then we set it up right we go for the management approvals we'll take the fund um we build the team we aware the team we 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 you know um, prepare the team for such scenarios you know and these kind of we, we train them so these kind of activities are part of your preparation preparation is like also having a playbook incident response playbook when we say incident response playbook it means there is a playbook in which things are written beforehand things are written already are mentioned in that particular playbook playbook that in case if ddos attack happened what all things you need to do to control it so playbooks are defined just like you know for football you might say there is a playbook like which managers read to you know strategize according to that that in case if other another opposition team is attacking in such a way then how we can defend it what all formations we need to implement what man marking we should do something like that okay so just like we have a incident response playbook in which if any attack happens things are already defined over there that what all things what all steps need to be taken in order to control the uh, control that particular incident clear that is all part of your preparation clear so far for the preparation part so once preparation is done that in case if there is an attack happened let's suppose there was an incident we do the detection and analysis so if you remember i told you like we try to determine whether it is really an incident or not or it may be a false positive correct or whether do we need to implement incident response team for the same thing or not so that will be part of a detection and analysis once it goes for detection analysis that okay we have defined it is an incident then it goes for the containment first 
Do you guys know what is containment? Anyone containment? So if we are saying, let's suppose there were three systems connected in the network. Let's suppose four. Let's suppose one, two, three, and four. If two and four got affected by any malware, if they got compromised, let's suppose they got co uh, compromised by the malware, what we are going to do is we'll put one and two, sorry, one and three in the network. And in two and four, we will be having any other substitute or alternatives in plan, which can be implemented in the network to fulfill their responsibilities. Meanwhile, this two and four. will be separated out into an another network a private network you can say a separate network where they both will be connected to each other in order to see the functionality of that particular malware right so what we have done from the main network from the main network we took them out and put into a containment zone just like when corona happened what happened when any person was identified of corona positive we put them into an isolation ward, right? We put those patients into isolation ward. Why we put them into isolation ward? Because it will stop the spreadness of that coronavirus, right? So similarly, in terms of a system in the network, we will quarantine or we will contain those systems separately in a different network. A private network which will not impact us in order to analyze that particular malware which infected it okay so we are and after containment it goes for your eradication eradication means removing of that malware from the network or from that particular system like permanently giving the solution mitigating those things okay that is eradication removal of those malware detecting and removing it once you have removed it, then you go for the recovery. You use the backups, you fetch out your data from the backups and you know, put it back into the systems like two and four. And then can you see there's another arrow which is pointing out towards again, detection and analyst. Now, if everything seems to be fine, if everything is all good, you go for the post incident activity. So what we do guys, like whenever these operations are performed in between like preparation, detection, analysis, containment, education, recovery, post-sense activity like these things are being recorded as in reports are being created documents are being created and at the end once the system has been recovered what you do you sit around with uh, sit around with the incident response team your managers and you discuss about the fact that okay what all improvements we can make like you know how that attack happened what went wrong where we fell short and what all things we need to implement now in order to make ourselves stronger for such kind of an attacks so that such kind of an attack will never happen in future again so if new policy need to be defined we define the policies if any changes in the policies are need to be make uh, need to be done they will be done if new new security controls are needed to be implemented new security controls will be implemented you know and so on so that you know it's like a lesson learned so that such activity will never happen in future again So that was from NIST perspective, right? Then this is same thing, but in a more like couple of more steps you can see has been added over here, right? A bit more are there. So we have preparation for incident response, incident recording. Is it a security incident or not? If no, not classified as security incident. If yes, incident is handling and response team is assigned to it. Then Incident analysis and validation is done. We call it incident triage. Validation, classification, prioritization of that incident is done. Incident is done over here. Then we send the notification to the management and stakeholders. Then we perform the containment, evidence gathering, and forensic analysis, like where forensic digital forensics comes into the picture. Eradication, then recovery, and then post incident activities, like their documentation, incident impact assessment, reviewing revised policies, and then closing the incident, and the disclosure is done okay so regarding this what we can do we can talk about this in more detail like i will uh, define each and everything 
so kind of a something similar which we have done but yeah more in detail that one uh, what we can do it's almost a break time so we can have a quickly five minutes break and we can continue after that sounds good from here as we have discussed so far in the entire incident response process so ir when you to ir is a short form of incident response okay so as i mentioned this is kind of process where we find the incident when it occurred okay or its impact and its cause so here it's like you know um, this entire process flow which we have over here it's 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 like managing you no know, the incident response processes like we have preparation detection containment eradication and recovery in order to overcome you know that impact of an incident like very quickly and very efficiently that's why we have incident response team for that so incident response process they are very important uh, you know in order to provide a very focused and structured approach so that we can do what we can restore the normal business processes or normal business operations as quickly as possible okay and we have to make sure that we have minimal impact to the business okay so in instant response processes or process we we have what we define policies we develop the protocols we develop we, we build the incident response team you know we look out for the organization's assets we plan incident response procedures we also get the management approvals we create a report we prioritize the incident you know and then we manage the responses okay so here a good communication should be there between you know those individuals who are responding to an incident as well as we should have a guide you know uh, them to detect analyze contain recover and prevent those incidents so this process might differ from organization to organization but generally everything boils down to these things which are mentioned over here all right so very first one like these processes they in itself are in details by the way just uh, give an idea but this is an overview like preparation has its have its own a uh, detailed chart uh, incident recording assignment has its own detailed chart triage has its own detailed chart notification has its detailed chart containment has its detailed detail chart when i say chart as in uh, flow graph okay so very first one is preparation so first phase of incident response is to face the security issues so preparation for this will be including like performing audit of the resources and the assets to determine what is the purpose of the security we define the rules over here we define the policies we define the procedures you know which will be helping us to drive our incident response processes we'll build our incident response processes we'll train our incident response team right so like it we have to make sure that how ready we are right in order to handle those incident as quickly as possible and in efficient manner correct so all like you know we'll be gathering the required tools training the employees defining policies procedures every that bit of it okay then it goes for the second stage which is incident recording and assignment so the preparation phase is then followed by our incident recording and assignment phase where we'll do what initial reporting and recording of the incident take place where what happens initial recording of incident in initial reporting and recording of incident take, takes place so in this phase what we do we do identify the incident we define proper incident communication plan for the employees and it will be including communication methods like forming uh, you know um, it support personnel will be there with they who will be raising the tickets like their ticket system is there correct like whenever any incident is there obviously you will be raising ticket and you know define uh, whether it should go to the incident response team or to your senior team like that correct so ticketing system is there so uh, when a user or any employee i would say they report any suspicious behavior in their system to the it support staff when any user or employee reports any suspicious behavior in their system to the it support staff what do they do they raise a ticket okay there is a ticket or you can say token just like when you have made any uh, you know uh, customer care call you might have noticed they said okay just wait a second let me raise this thing to my senior manager or executive manager 
ever make uh, have you ever done any customer care call so you talk to them and when they are not able to resolve your issue they say okay let me raise this to my senior management or you can say to my executive management or if your wi-fi is down right if your wi-fi is down you raise a ticket that my wi-fi is not working send any person so you're raising a ticket over there isn't it the same thing happens in the organization also i hope that makes sense right so you raise the ticket that you like you know any user employee will be reporting any suspicious behavior to the it support staff they raise a ticket or token about those irregular behavior and then assign a member from the incident response team in order to analyze that issue so based on the ticket okay the incident response team will look into the issue and and if it qualifies as an incident your incident response team will be assigned to it and the compromised device will be sent to the incident response team for further investigation else else this no portion is there this no portion is defining the else section else the issue will be considered as resolved and ticket will be closed when you when your incident is assigned to your incident response team incident handling and response team assigned see then it goes for this incident triage okay these are the keywords guys you should always remember that so when you go for the interview you know when you uh, put these keywords it it gives you a really good impression over there it gives an idea that okay you know the people knows the flow how incidents are being uh, you know um, how the incidents need to be taken care of. so they give the situation they give the scenarios and those scenarios can be answered using this flow chart very efficiently so in incident triage in this particular phase your incident will be analyzed and validated okay so incident will be categorized and it will be also prioritized in this phase right so you know uh, we'll classify what kind of an incident it is then we'll prioritize that incident obviously high medium low as per that as per the priority we'll be handling those incident isn't it like which one need to be sorted first what all people need to be assigned for that what are the crucial ones which has been affected those will be having high priority you know this kind of a way that's why having an inventory of the asset is also important remember when we talk about having an asset in inventory asset inventory is there correct so asset inventory means we try to also determine which are our crucial assets or crown jewels we call it which are the important ones so which are whatever the are the important ones those will be having the high priority also because they have a lot of data a crucial data which can impact the entire business right so in short the incident prioritizations are done on the different different factors on the basis of different different factors so then the notification will be occurring after that like see uh incident response team will further analyze the compromised device to find the incident or incident details like what kind of attack what type of attack it is there its severity the targets its impact the method of propagation how attack has happened the attacker what methodology attacker has used you know like how they have like succeeded something like that from one system to another system this way and vulnerabilities which has been exploited so these details will be helping the incident response team to scale its impact and determine the priority to solve it okay then it goes for the notification see it is also important generally people miss out this factor the step four which is notification here so this incident information will be informed to various stakeholders including your management your third party vendors and your clients okay so as soon as the incident is confirmed and validated your incident responder will communicate the issue to management for gaining their approvals and permission because in organization can you guys do anything without the approvals think about it absolutely no right the approval is really important and it matters a lot like many organization they do not have like you know this process flow so they lack in it because many times like you know your um, senior managers they get angry because they are not being notified so for example you know uh, there was any incident or there's any phishing email in your vip customers you know and you block their account or you can see you you know revoke the access in order to protect that account but you didn't notify your ciso you notified your vip customer but you didn't notify your ciso so your ciso will be mad for that because it was a vip and you know he's not getting an update for that 
so depending on the you can say uh severity of the incident your notification should also be taking place make sense right it's 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 equally important so after notification you can say containment is there kind of a hand in hand they have to go in quickly manner so i would say like with the notification phase your contain, uh, containment phase follows where the incident response team will do what they will be containing the incident so containment of incident is the very crucial phase and it has to be performed in order to stop you know the spreading of infection uh, to other organization assets correct then it goes for the evidence gathering and forensic analysis so after containment phase uh these are evidence gathering phase i guess someone was asking for the same thing right i told you data digital forensics is played over here it comes into the picture over here so all the possible evidences which are related to the incident you know they are collected and they are submit to the forensic department in order to investigate the uh, evidence those which has been gathered so analysis of an incident would reveal details like you know the method of, method of attack vulnerabilities which got exploited uh, network devices which got infected application which got compromised you know uh, the pathways how the incident has occurred and if you are able to get the perpetrator perpetrators in the attacker that is also great so using this information about the incident your incident response team can do what they can eradicate the incident and its occurrence in future by blocking its propagation methods like you know of its uh, movement how it is growing a flowing in the network then it goes for the eradication eradication means as i mentioned uh, here your incident response team will remove or eliminate the root cause of the incident and then close all the attacking vectors to prevent the similar incidents in future so eradication method will be including like patching of vulnerabilities replacement of malfunctioning devices installation of better security mechanism including malware signatures you know all of these things so when someone said patching in uh, post incident that's why i told you patching will be part of eradication only because we are removing it right we are securing ourselves from it then is a recovery so once we have eliminated the cause of the incident your incident response team they will be like restoring the affected systems their services the resources and the data through recovery okay so it is kind of a responsibility of the incident response team to make sure that there is no disruption to the service or business of the organization regarding that incident so we need to recover the compromised devices any application or systems you know as soon as possible either by replacing them or fixing them as quickly as possible and then finally is a post incident activities uh as i mentioned till this stage your incident will be contained the system will be recovered and all the tasks that are to be performed by the incident response responder after this stage falls under post incident activities like your incident documentation will be there your imp incident impact analysis will be done you'll be reviewing and revising the policies and like uh, you know you'll be disclosing that incident so incident documentation is there with the very first one in this one here in documentation we will be documenting our incident responder will be documenting the complete process starting from the detection from the detection to recovery you can say okay detection to recovery so this document will be helping us you know for the future reference in order to understand the practices which were employed to handle the incident okay so we'll be you know looking into it like how we can assess the losses review the policies we'll make changes to the security you know something like that an incident impact assessment so after completing the formal process of incident response from the incident you know recording till documentation your response team will perform the incident incident impact analysis where by analyzing all the information they will assess the impact of damage or loss which was done by that incident to the organization and organization's assets okay so the impact analysis will be checked or done then we review and revise policies so once we have assessed the impact uh, your incident response team will review and revise the policies preparation and protection procedures security controls will also be checked and these kind of thing and these things are done so that we can prevent such future incidents okay 
then we'll simply close the investigation so incident will be thoroughly investigated documented and you know appropriate policies are reviewed and revised and then in uh, at the last your investigation is at the verge of its end and the investigation will be terminated officially in this phase and then incident disclosure is there so once you have identified the impact of the incident incident response team will disclose the incident after closing the incident formally after closing the incident formally your incident response team will discuss with the management whether to disclose the details of the incident um, you know to the public communities or not or to customers of the organizations media like that so that thing is done as a part of your disclosure if it's required then we disclose it data forensics is a branch of forensic science that involves the investigation and analysis of digital devices and electronic data to gather evidence for legal purposes the primary goal of digital forensics is to uncover preserve analyze and present electronic evidence in a way that is admissible in court of law these are the key keywords okay so basically see digital forensics as i mentioned just like your normal uh, forensic process which i have told you previously also digital forensics is there in order to help you to figure out the root cause or you can say root cause analysis of that incident in order to catch the attacker as well so in digital forensics uh, you can say evidence are gathered okay evidence uh, like you know uh, would be something like which are like data which are not visible to your naked eye correct so in terms of evidence let's suppose there was any laptop mobile phone hard disk anything in those hard disks your data is stored correct in those hard disk your data is stored correct that is your evidence you will be collecting that evidence but when you are analyzing that evidence you not do you do not do entire operations on the original evidence okay what i meant with that is see in normal crime scene we the entire team is doing going to the crime criminal uh, crime scene like you know wearing their suits their kits having cameras to record the entire uh location uh that crime spot and they'll be collecting the evidence in some bags and then analyzing it in the lab forensic lab uh to see like how that person got killed what was the medium right how that person like what was used whether it was poison or he was shot point blank from which kind of a bullet and so on correct so basically in this digital forensics the same thing happens we will go to the crime scene we uh, you know in that crime scene basically we will be using our cameras clicking the pictures of that place okay clicking the picture of that place and recording each and everything investigating people over there okay we we'll investigate with the people as well okay take their interviews or you can say record those things apart from that you know you collect the evidence you collect those evidence in a faraday bag do you know what is a faraday bag faraday f a r a d a y so it not let any waves coming from outside to inside on either from your inside to outside yeah so assuming for digital evidence what happens in this one guys that uh, you know you collect the evidences and those evidences when you're collecting them you know uh, they are collected in a very secure manner so that you know you're not corrupting the original evidence because then it will not be admissible in front of court you cannot reboot the machine just like that because what if a malware is already placed over there that 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 triggers as soon as you reboot a system that can be done right and it will be releasing all the uh, erasing all the history and you cannot perform all the analysis in your original evidence as well you do what guys you create an image of that original evidence you create an image of that original evidence exact replica you can say okay and then you perform the operations or analysis on the image and whatever you conclude then you represent in front of court because if you make any changes in the original evidence it will lose its integrity 
and then it is not admissible in front of court okay so you do what you create an image of it clear and when you collect the data when you collect the data from your uh, evidences you go from volatile memory like you go in terms of order of volatility more volatile to less volatile more volatile to less volatile when i say volatile as in uh, something which is very temporary which can be removed easily for example your ram cache registers data correct so as soon as you reboot your system these memories or these data will be gone but as an evidence these are also important right so you go from these more volatile to less volatile as in something which is in your hard disk chain of custody is also maintained guys chain of custody means there will be a documentation which will be maintained and we keep the record of each and every person who is handling the evidence and how they are handling the evidence at what time at what place at what time uh, what date so that in case if there are any changes in the original evidence we'll get to know who did it so that's why anyone everyone like you know whosoever is handling the evidence will be recorded in a chain of custody what all methods they are using on that uh, evidence what all operation they are doing on that evidence each and everything will be recorded each and everything that is documented and that documentation is known as a chain of custody <clears throat> so digital for uh, digital devices play a role in criminal activity like you know uh, it has like fa uh, facilitation of crime so communication like criminals they can use digital devices to communicate with each other you know and they can plan the crimes so this can include using encrypted messaging apps social media or even online forums research and planning can also be part of your facilitation of crime so criminals they can use digital devices to research their targets and plan their crimes this can include like things like looking up maps and directions finding vulnerabilities in security systems and even learning how to make explosives execution of crime can also be part of your facilitation of crime so in some cases digital devices can use can be used to directly execute a crime for example a hacker might use a computer to launch a cyber attack a thief might use a smartphone to steal someone's identity that way evidence of crime digital, devi digital devices they can store a wealth of evidences uh, wealth of evidence that can be used to investigate and prosecute the crimes so this can include like you know the text messages emails photos videos even browsing history so even if criminals try to delete evidence it can often be recovered by forensic investigators this is because digital data digital data is really truly deleted it is simply overwritten with new data right target of crime digital devices themselves can be target of crime for example thieves might steal laptops or smartphones or hackers might target computers to steal data or solve malware surveillance and espionage so spyware and surveillance tools like criminals they may use digital devices for spying on individuals or organizations this could involve like you know the use of spyware or any other surveillance tools to gather sensitive information illegally eavesdropping digital devices like your smartphones computers may be exploited for illegal uh, eavesdropping or wiretapping like man in the middle attack right social engineering and manipulation so you know phishing so criminals use digital communications to engage in phishing attacks uh nishan yeah <clears throat> uh, tricking individuals into providing sensitive information or performing actions that compromise the security right so these kind of a ways are there so role of these are the role of digital devices in you know, a crime scene in forensics what do we have we have six a's which is possible popular for six is very first one is our assessment like six is of forensic serve as a set of guiding principles for the collection analysis and presentation of digital evidence so these principles encompass assessment acquisition authentication analysis articulation and archiving assessment means this is the first phase of the process like it tells you that what you do when presented with a case and need to determine a course of action over here so you determine scope and quantity of data you identify the repositories that could potentially hold some evidences like your hard disk 
memory can be the place where malware can be found right you protect and preserve over here okay uh, like you will collect and protect them in faraday back chain of custody is part of your assessment preview the data you know these part acquisition here your analyst will be acquiring the data in a forensically sound manner so that they can conduct the investigation so they identify the source media or the suspected disk like what is my source then where i need to store that data and how much data to be stored and what data needs to be stored will be select the acquisition parameters you identify the destination media or the image disk right you select the acquisition parameters you create the image creating the image is part of your acquisition only right then authentication authentication means like you will be calculating uh, the hash value for original source and the image if the both matches that means that is exact replica see you have original evidence and as per we discussed that you cannot operate or you cannot investigate anything in your original evidence right so for that what you do you create an image and when we're saying image is an exact replica how can we conclude it how can we be assured of that image is an exact replica of the original evidence we do it by using hashes so what we do we create a hash of original evidence let's suppose it's hash a and we create a hash of image also hash b if they both matches that means they this image is the exact replica of your original evidence acquisition simply means how you're acquiring the data in a forensically sound manner like you know with all the correct steps so that you can perform the investigation after that acquiring storing the data creating the image of it is also part of your acquisition <clears throat> then further we go for the analysis so after the analyst has acquired the image they will perform the analysis so they'll perform the analysis over there like you know uh, offline analysis will be there offline analysis as in uh, your investigator will be collecting the evidence before analyzing it an investigator has to travel to the suspect systems location and bring it offline to acquire its hard disk remote is remote investigation uh, like performing the investigation on a remote machine right so here investigator needs to configure and deploy the appropriate software in advance for that so you have to identify and decrypt any password protected encrypted files recover deleted files using appropriate tools documenting the file names dates times check for active and deleted emails you know this kind of a thing articulation is the next one articulation means like after the investigation investigation your investigator will be uh, investigator probably has the evidence and information which are relevant to the case so in articulation they will be documenting it they will documenting the findings okay so that even a non technical person can understand the report because that has to be represented in front of a court remember that is admissible to court an archival after the investigator has detailed the findings and the case has concluded investigator must archive the data and finding in case like you know we archive it just like our messages we archive them just in case like if if your investigator has to readdress the case in future we can take it from the archive place okay that is why archival is important clear <clears throat> just to give an idea about how things looks like in the security sections and you know uh, just just a quick um, you can say demo of it in a short manner uh, we'll be using wireshark to see how things looks like on the defensive side and offensive side okay all right wireshark is a network analysis tool you can say like whatever the net traffic is being flowing from your machine you can see those things in a wireshark see regarding the protocols as well anyway uh i'll just quickly show you that if you're performing a scan you know from the offensive side if you talk about it
okay and one sixty eight dot nine dot one twenty nine okay if you are trying to perform a scan and trying to determine what all ports are open and what all services are running in the other machine or in the target machine you have performed the scan using nmap okay and we got the results but how can you determine the same thing in your <clears throat> um, defensive side so what you do you look out for those things over here in the wire shark see can you see a lot of red flags over here Like red, 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 red is there, correct? A lot of things are in red. If I go for statistics, uh, analyze, okay. Expert information. Can you see this thing? Warning. And a lot of reset flags are there. Reset flags are being sent. It means someone is trying to abruptly close the connection. So what happens now? when you perform and map sorry this one when you are performing a scanning the attacker was performing scanning no this scanning has a property what it does just like a three-way handshake let's suppose a is your attacker b is your target a victim a will be sending the sin flag to which b replies back with synac as soon as b reply back with synac a will get to know what all ports are open Okay, if, because if the port is open, it will reply back with Synac. Now A will be sending the reset flag in return to abruptly close the connection because it does not want to establish the connection over there. Instead of that, A just wanted to know what all ports are open, what all services are running over there. That is what A wants to do. So in order to see this, if in you know Wireshark, if you see such kind of a results, that many uh, you know reset flags are there. That is kind of an alarming situation now. Using this information, what you can do, you can go for your um, low graph. Now, in this flow graph, if I select for TCP, because this is a TCP base only, can you see now? Now, notice one thing. The entire traffic to the victim machine is going from one IP only. Can you see this? Huge amount of traffic. Huge amount of traffic. See? Reset, 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 sin, synac, reset, 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 reset. Right? So this is something which is suspicious that one particular IP is sending huge amount of traffic. And if you should check the time zone or time also, time duration will be very close to each other. So that means what? Someone is trying to scan our network and trying to determine what all ports are open so that they can perform an attack. Mohammed Abdul, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why we get to another, right? If someone is performing it. Generally, we try to block it first. But in case of it's we are getting, we can like put an alert with the time in respect to time. 